Robinson Show, we are back with Sonati Pop. What's up, guys? What's up, What dude? is going on, man? <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, man, good. I'm good. You're, uh, you're a rapper from Potsdam, PA, right? Correct. And that's uh, what? That's right outside of Philly? Yeah, I'm a little west of Philly. Cool, cool. About 20 minutes. Is that where you blew up, the Philly scene? Yeah, I mean, I've been in Pots. I've been in Pots my whole life, but yeah, in the, in the area. Right near the Yingling Factory, right? Pots. That's where that is. Right? <laughs> What's is that, that? That's near the Yingling Factory, right? Or that's the... Pottsville. Oh, no, Pottsville. The... Yeah, that's up in the mountains. That's like a good uh, two hours or so from me. Oh, okay. All right, gotcha. I've actually, I've actually never been there. I've been wanting to go there my whole life. They do tours of the of the brewery and i still have never been there <laughs> nice dude how long have you been making music for um i mean i started i started dicking around with like you know making beats and just like screwing around recording at home when i was like right, right in high school i guess or right out of high school um and then I, I didn't get serious with it like or or even realize that i could be serious with it until probably it's been a while, probably like 10 years, but it's a slow process, you know, like, to make that transition, I guess. Mm, yeah. I, it was for me. What do you make beats on? I don't anymore. I haven't in a long time, but I mean, I, I just used the same shit everybody used back then. I was just using Fruity Loops. Okay. Um, yeah, like, I was, I was pretty young. I think I was, like, 15 when I got my first, like, hacked version of Fruity Loops <laughs> on, on like the oldest com Toshiba computer in the world the laptop um, mm -hmm. but now I like if I do anything now if I'm just screwing around I usually just do it in Pro Tools and I'll, I'll kind of just I like to do a lot of stuff with the microphone like even for for drums or sounds or whatever I'll kind of just beat on my desk or sort of like just not use the program drums you know what I mean mm, that's cool how long have you been writing uh, lyrics for uh, about the same time. I mean, I, I started doing that, just kind of rapping with friends when I was like a kid. Like, yeah. When did you? 14. When did it really start to like turn into something for you? <clears throat> um. Well, like I said, I, I never really realized when I was young. I didn't really think like take it serious because it just seemed so out of reach. I guess. You know what I mean? So mm. like, I, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm in my thirties. So back then, I didn't grow up with like you know the shit that everybody has now so it seemed like impossible and um i met a friend of mine i was at a bar I, I i was like 20 or so and was at a bar and um i met this guy he was hosting and like passed me a mic and i start i just start rapping he was like just what they were doing and uh his name's Dave Vegas and um he ended up becoming like you know one of my best friends but and then I, once I met him, I, I kind of like I got to know him, and I went and checked out his little home studio and stuff, and I realized, wow, this is this is really serious. Like he's making legit songs, and he's the one that kind of put me into it. And cool. Dude. His friend, he's friends with. Uh, oh, we're both we're both friends with uh, Q Ball from uh, Bloodhound Gang, and that's who got him started. Mm -hmm. nice. So it was like it was just down the line. Like he got him into it, told him what to buy, and then we both we all copied off of each other what we bought with gear and all that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I first heard you on uh one of Sauce's songs, uh and you've been on a couple with him and then I started listening to your your stuff too and like your stuff stays in my rotation, man. Your stuff is great. Nice, that's great, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, Sauce is Sauce is a good friend so I mean, he's he's great and you know, you guys know him, he's he's extremely creative and just you know, odd. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, in that good way, in that good way, man. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, in the best way. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's just a creative person, like through and through. You know, he is, man. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met him personally? Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, back. Um, I'm trying to think of how I. I used to be sponsored by a clothing company. Um, from DC, and I met them at a at a gig in Penn State. And um, it was actually the, the owner of it. They all owned this clothing company together. It was uh, my manager who ended up, the guy that ended up being my manager. He, Sauce was part of it. Um, 
another guy that I worked with, Chris, we call him named Glock. He was part of it. Uh, and there was total, there was like five kids from D.C., like all young college kids. And um, Stoss was one of them. And they ended up being like sponsoring me and, and then became like my manager. They kind of evolved. So like everybody else kind of got dropped off and the clothing company became like, basically became Sonati Pop. Like it became, the offices became my, our, our offices. You know what I mean? You took over. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was just, it was the thing to push. Like I was the, I was the one that didn't have, that either didn't have uh, you know, management already. And that was worth pushing. So, mm. you know, it was, it was just how it worked out. It was also part of that. And like, we go back, I don't know, probably like seven years by now or six, six years or so anyway. And, He's been there, you know, since pretty early when I actually, you know, was accomplishing anything. Nice, dude. That's cool. Yeah, so I've known him for a while. We, and I, we don't see each other frequently because we live so far, but um, mm. we used to have we used to have the office in in DC, um, and we actually had a, a screen printing shop. I bought a whole screen printing shop, and we set it up in in this kid's garage. Nice. And it was just all, uh, we were all down there. I would go down there like every weekend. <laughs> Nice, dude. That's cool. What up? But yeah, I used to see him a lot. That's cool. What? Uh, how long? Like, have you ever been on a label? Because I saw that. Um, I saw an interview with you. Um, about staying behind the music, and you said uh, a label actually contacted you to do that track, right? Yeah, I mean, I've had, uh, you know, short and pretty negative experiences with labels I would say wow but, like it's cool it's cool to go there you know, like I've been to I went up to, to Yonkers to the Rough Riders studio and met Wow he's the, the owner of Rough Riders and like um, and like my attorney took me up there he's friends with him and he's friends with like the guy that found Britney Spears and you meet all these people and like they hear stories about and shit it's cool like, like same line of music came from Universal Universal Republic um, which was the, the VP of that is the road manager of, or was the road manager of the Bloodhound Gang. So it's all, you know, down that same line again. Okay. But you know, they're just always, there's so much smoke up their ass that <laughs> yeah, I, it's just, they, they make you expect so much. And it, when you're in the position that we're in as an artist, it's just, it's easily, you're easily disappointed. You know what I mean? you expect the world and then they just like uh because they'll tell you that they'll be like oh yeah kid promise you right yeah all this shit and then it's just like nah man that's (laughs) (laughs) something yeah i mean i'm not too fond of of too Mm. many of the people that i met through the labels Mm. the artists i've met you know i've met some artists that that i grew up listening to that like i idolized as a a kid and they're, they're great you know, they're a different story, but the people that are behind it all are just, it's all, it's just business. That's what it seems like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to ask and, you where you feel the the future of, of the music industry is going, because it, it just seems like from the music on the radio, it's, it's the same, you know, five songs over and over, and they all suck. And even to, like, morning DJs, they're just all doing their... their bits, and they're not even original. They're just getting them from, like, you know, a company. Yeah, they're... they're cultivated from the same shit. I mean, it's, it's weird. I was just thinking the other day, because I was listening to, like, our station here's 96.5. I don't know if you guys get that here. Like, well, that's one of our stations. Yeah, that does come and, in um, every now and then. So, like, I don't remember what was on. Something, I mean, one of the most retarded people I've ever, I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> just, like, one of those mumble rap songs. Okay. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? This is crazy. It sounds like it's a, like a spoof commercial or something. It's a real song where the info comes up on my screen and all that. And then right after that comes on Bruno Mars with that his new song. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, how can some? How can there be like these two so vastly different levels of talent? <laughs> like one is is literally retarded, and one's like <laughs> like Michael Jackson. Yeah. How did they play? They played back-to-back, and I'm like, how the fuck does this happen on the same radio station? <laughs> it's almost, it's, it feels like we have, like, two different music industries now. Yeah, it, it seems like it's all on the same, like you said, though, too, because I remember a few years ago, um, the Rolling Stones had a new song, and it was pretty good, and it was, I didn't hear it, like, on a rock station. I heard it on, you know, our top 20 station out here. Just like you said, back yeah. to back with like some other garbage, man. Like it's all lumped together. 
it's weird. Well, and it, I mean, there's that. There's like the difference in in the sounds of the music, but then there's I mean, the labels put out whatever they put out, good or bad. You know what I mean? Like they have their their like stranglehold on on radio and on on the bigger medias, but then there's like this whole other subculture now. It's not just hip hop anymore. It's like a subculture of all music because there's so many people making music. It even in that way, it's almost like two different businesses. I mean, one's barely a business, and then one's just like this super business that you mm. can't escape. It's just weird. I mean, it, it's frustrating as you know, trying to find your way through it all. That we all want to be that. We all want to be like. I'm ready to be like you're special. I'm gonna make you a star. Yeah. You know? <laughs> There's just so <laughs> many fucking stupid, hard. <laughs> There's so many stupid people that eat up the crap. Oh, though. the crap like, though. Yeah. I know, but you can't. You know, if they, it, it seems like people want to like whatever they think they're supposed to like, whatever other people like, and mm. then that's just. It's like a crowd draws a crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's the craziest thing that's happened to you in performing? Performing, uh, like during a performance. Yeah, like I, mean, I was gonna say, have you ever gotten in like uh, stiffed on a performance, like you know, not paid for a gig, or have you ever gotten in like an altercation or anything? Um, no, I mean I've never been like stiffed on anything. Um, that stuff usually, I mean, you, you would usually get like half up front anyway. So okay, it's I, yeah, no, I never didn't get paid. I mean, I've had problems with like sound guys before or it's you know dumb shit i've never had any like no bra or anything break out but <laughs> i've definitely i've had a couple times when and they're rare but i mean normally like i've been a i think a pretty good live performer um i had a couple times like when i get drunk and i made an asshole out of myself for sure <laughs> like, i remember <laughs> I was drunk in uh, in Brooklyn one time. I think I still I think I actually still performed pretty good. I don't remember. I was like I was I was probably eight beers in by the time I went on. And um and I got up and I was like throwing shit. My manager's down there trying to control me. But like and he, I'm on a pretty tall stage, They're, like a four foot stage. <laughs> and he's only like five foot tall. So I'm throwing like my I'm throwing shirts like in his face or something and I'm like, Look at this, this is my stupid little Jew manager. <laughs> oh, I don't shout at people. <laughs> uh, I've done I've done some drunk, you know, drunkenness, some, yeah, dumb shit like that. <laughs> I mean, it, it, sometimes you get somewhere, and if you're not, you know, things are backed up, and you don't necessarily go on when you're supposed to. And, they don't have a room for you to hang out in. It's like, what the hell am I going to do? I got a drink. Got to, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, hey, it happens. Right? Shit, you got it, man. You got it. Oh, man. Who have you uh, performed with? Um, I mean, usually just by myself. I mean, the only people that I really, like, um, frequently perform with were people that I know close, like Dave, um, the guy I was telling you about. Yeah. He's like like my brother and he's super, super talented. He's he he's the guy that like we all before we were doing anything with it that we all looked up to him like he's it. That's cool. Like he's it. He's definitely gonna make it. And then like there's a couple like um another good friend of mine his name is Dylan Andre. You guys should look him up actually he's a really good singer songwriter. Um so I've done some stuff with him. We travel a little bit, went to like Nashville and just, just small gigs, little club places and stuff. But um, he's really good. They're all local to me, though. Okay. Like, I've done. It, when you're, you know, coming up and you're like a nobody, any 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 of the people that you see that say like, "Oh, I went and performed with so and so," they're kind of it's bullshit situation. Like they're <laughs> they're opening for somebody. Yeah. And I've done like I've done that. I've done like fabulous or and Nas and whatever, but. You don't ever even see these people. They don't know you. You're just the person that is on before them. Oh, okay. Because you live there. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, they're nonsense. How did you choose the name, Sonati Pop? <laughs> As, um, kind of a goofy story. <laughs> um, 
so when I was young, like when I was like 19, 20, people used to say I look like a young Frank Sinatra. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I really even did, but whatever. I was like, I'm cool with that. <laughs> I was going to ask, and I, that's I what it almost sounded like to me, like a play on Sinatra. Well, it was, it was. But I, I don't think I even really looked like him. I looked like Neil Patrick Harris. Like, I looked just like fucking Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> Not so much like Frank. But I was like, all right, I'm good with that. <laughs> um, so that, like, for a long time, people were just like, hey, Sinatra, what's up, blah, blah, blah. And that became, like, my nickname. And then um, it, it, like, morphed. Because people called me Young Sinatra. That was, like, and that was, like, my rap thing as a kid. But... <laughs> There was a bunch of young Sinatras, and I don't know if you know who Logic is, but Logic was one of them. Yes. We both went by that same name, like, and that was what he titled his album. Like, if you go and, and go to youngsinatra.com, you go to my website, not his. Okay. So we were, we were both that back in, like, the MySpace days, <laughs> and I bought it up. Um, and then, like, it, you know, it was, there was a bunch of them, and I was like, yeah, this name's kind of whatever. And my friend Eric, Back when um, uh, Little Wayne's song came out, Lollipop, he, we did a skit, and it was him making fun of me, and he just, he came up with that. He, he was trying to make fun of me in this skit, in this goofy voice, and he, and he kept saying, it's a naughty pop, naughty pop, something like that, and we both just stopped, like, <laughs> a couple minutes in, and I'm like, he's like, it's naughty pop, and I was like, we're both just looking at each other. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I don't even know what the fuck that means, but it sounds cool. Like, it does. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Nobody else is that, so I'm going to do that. That's cool. <laughs> you took what was intentionally supposed to be an insult. To yeah, turn but it, it does. It sounds, it, it sounds cool, though. Like that's It started cool. out like as a, as a skit for a record of him. What the fuck? He was pretending to be me and be like a douchey rapper <laughs> in a in a in a hot tub at his mom like in a jacuzzi tub in his mom's house. If you don't know until later, but like, and he's there with girls and he's like talking all this shit. And then like his mom knocks on the door and he's like, "Mom, leave me alone." But anyway, it was him making fun of me. <laughs> nice dude, Sonati, could you rap uh, a cappella for us? Yeah, sure. Cool man. Um, all right. Give me a second here. Let me get a drink. I'm actually in a minivan right now, drinking a glass of vodka. In <laughs> front of my girlfriend's house. <laughs> we, have, we have three kids, so it's like it's loud as shit in there. <laughs> yeah, it gets crazy. So, Adi, when you start to, I'm going to mute the mics just so if you don't hear our reactions or anything, that's why, because we're muted. Yeah, we don't want to interrupt. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, dude. All right. Robin Slim, the show, freestyling it. If the Slamborghini's fighting, then I'll ride with him. Suck a punch a motherfucker, man. I'll clobber them. I'm just making up some words so I can rhyme with them. See, this is kind of hard, so I'll die content. If I make it through this verse, I'll be surprised as shit. Rappers are full of it. I mean, they lie a bit. Talking dollar dollar bills, but can't find no sense. I started rhyming just to find some kits to bury my face in, cause I'm a prick. But I've been lit for these kids with five and shit. A eighties baby, and I'll beat your ass, cause I'm no bitch. Suck my dick. Make sure you get the nuts too. It's pretty long, and I'm probably gonna bust two. Twice, dose. Make sure you get the right dose. Lyrically, I pipe throats. Wish I could fit your ear canal. You hear me now? I'm hip-hop's serial rapist. You should fear me now. That still doesn't make sense. But my dick isn't music. It's difficult for these bitches. This shit is confusing. But still, it's amusing. I knock out their tooth. This is running out of shit to say about doofuses. So, I'm on this podcast, but it sounds like real radio. It's hopping like frog ass. Pop gets them all gas, like diesel or unleaded. God damn it, you can bet it. If I said it, then I meant it. 
with my dirty jerks, brethren. We don't fuck with 7-Eleven. This is wild, wild country. When I'm hungry, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> uh, it's upsetting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, was, that was awesome, that was bro. Thank I'm you. I'm in a fucking minivan drinking some vodka. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great, brother. <laughs> Nice, dude. Nice. Uh, <laughs> who, who else did you guys have on tonight? Oh, we had an author, um, Matthew. Uh, what was his last name? Matthew Brockmeyer. He was from uh, Cali. He read us one of his stories online. We have a, uh, a friend who produces his wife's podcast. He was on earlier. Um, we had a, another podcaster before you. And yeah. we have a comedian. After you named Andy Fiore, he's from uh, New York. He's a cool dude. Cool, dude. That's what I, I, I. The first time I listened to your show, I was I, and I, I emailed you and I was like, "Yo, I'm impressed." Yes. Everything sounds legit. Like there's, it's usually pretty good sound quality, and like you guys got. You know what's funny? You sound. You have like the radio voice. You sound like uh, I don't. I don't know who it would be, like an opiate or Anthony kind of thing or whatever. But you have like mm. a radio. Like the guy that runs the show voice. <laughs> um, Slim sounds just like Mike Birbiglia. <laughs> and, and, and Slimbo sounds just like, um, what's his name? The fucking, uh, the guy from like the neighbors and, uh, you mean like Seth Rogen? I Morgan? dude, that was Seth a, Rogen. That's yeah, the first dude, thing I said about I it. I get Seth that. Rogen. I get that, especially from kids that are like, like that are in like they're like they're teenagers or like in their early twenties. The always first thing I thought about it, like, like, you, like sound sounds exactly. like Seth Rogen. <laughs> like right now, you sound exactly like. It's crazy. It's like listening to a show with Seth Rogen, Mike Birbiglia, and then like you're the radio. It's your show. It's radio, and you have to do a guest all the time. It's weird. <laughs> But then well, what I was getting at is, like, you guys have these such a diverse, uh, like, your guests are just, I wasn't expecting it to be, like, the kind of guests that you get. Like, you get, like you said, authors and, like, politicians and shit on. Yeah. It, it's cool. And then, like, rappers and shit. And you're, but you guys treat everybody, like, you know, like. The same. Mm. Well, maybe not everybody. Not, yeah, there are <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I've, I've fuck. heard you. I've heard you shit on a couple people <laughs> before, but but for the most part, you even if you know, even if they're not, you're listening. and You're like, this guy is not that great. You guys are like, wow, man, like that's really cool, well, mm. which is good because that's just that's yeah. how you, you know. Man, as long as somebody it's, tries, you know, that's all. That's all I can ask for. Yeah, it, I mean, for the most part, I've, I've listened to. I started on. Um, I think it's whatever the last one saw this song because I realized that he was on and I was like, hey, you were on this show and he's like, yeah. And I went back, I think it was like 84, 85. Wow. And um, and I listened to probably like 10 episodes. And I got in, I got to say, I'm a fan. Like, I'm a legit fan. I listen cool, to, I have a little pill, Bluetooth pill thing. Mm. And I'll stick it in my fucking pocket and walk around That's cool. and listen to it. I have to mute it every time somebody comes around. And <laughs> But I listen to you guys now. I'm a legit fan. Thank you, brother. That's Ooh. awesome to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say, going back to us not really, like, you know, like, being nice to people and stuff, as long as as long as long your name's not, like, NATO Potato, <laughs> we're going to treat yeah, you yeah. Right. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. you guys do it in a fake way, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. I genuinely try to, you know, to hear somebody out. You know, everyone's got. Right. Everyone's got yeah. something, but. Yeah, and then I mean, them. you know, if it takes a turn, and they're, I like, I heard the one he was like a like a real hick dude that you guys had on, and you were just blatantly <laughs> shitting on right now. <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. That was the uh, the exploded oh, guy, Ralph. Yeah. Radio Ralph. <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, it's like when somebody gives you that opportunity, that opportunity, yeah. you can't pass it. Yeah, like that. that's like Pippin he... giving. Uh, <laughs> Given Jordan, you know, the, the fucking brought, layup. And the best part is he brought the heat, too. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, like, so you guys are in what? South Jersey? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're south. We're, we're by, uh, like, LBI. It's the taint of Jersey. <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah, Dude, man. Uh, Asbury Park. That's my summer spot. 
Nice, dude. My, uh, I got a lot of fa- family up there in that town. I love it that they do like the bonfires on the beach and shit. It's like yeah. such a little chill town. Nice, cool dude. Yeah, we'll have to, when we come back from like our summer break, if you're still around, man, we'll have to have you on. Yeah. Keep in touch. Cool. Yeah, man. We have to wrap this up, brother, but thank you so much. And where can everybody find you? Absolutely. Um, I am on all, you know, all the typical social media. Um, it's just at Sinati, S-I-N-A-T-T-I, on, uh, I think on pretty much everything, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever, whatever else is out there. Uh, and then my website is in, it should be changed over by now. I'm not sure I haven't looked at it, but SinatiPop.com is my website. Nice. There's merch on there, and music is on iTunes, and Spotify, and Pandora, and, you know, wherever you find music. Awesome, dude. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No problem, no problem. brother. Have a good one, man. Take care. Later, man.